Hey, what's up guys? So Apple recently announced that they're gonna be adding police spotted alerts to Apple Maps, which got me thinking. I think it's time for an updated comparison with all of the different police reporting apps, including Waze, JBV1, Highway Radar, Escort Live, Cobra iRadar, Google Maps, and Apple Maps. <laughs> Now with all of these apps, they're gonna give you the ability to report police on the road and you're also gonna get notified to other people's reports. It's basically crowdsourced alerts all being reported through the cloud. Now, when it comes to all these different apps, Waze is the gold standard. And the reason is simple. It just has a ton of users actively using it and reporting where officers are located, which is really important for any sort of crowdsourced app. If you have a ton of users out on the road, an officer who's on the side of the road is gonna quickly get marked and then uh, everybody behind him will also get notified. Now, Besides police, Waze also gives you the ability to report things like traffic, uh, accidents, potholes on the road, or even things like vehicle stopped on shoulder ahead. But I find a lot of those notifications wind up getting annoying pretty quick, so I wind up turning most of them off. Now, when it comes to reporting police who are running a speed trap, when you see an officer on the side of the road, you can just go into the app, uh, report that an officer is there, and then it's gonna alert everybody back behind you. Waze's alerts are gonna be reported half a mile away, giving you hopefully enough time to actually slow down and take action. I wish the alerts were a little bit longer. Uh, older versions of Waze actually let you customize the alert distance, but with the current version, it's gonna be only half a mile. Now, eventually that cop is gonna move on. Maybe he's got a customer he wants to chase down and give a speeding ticket to. And so if you pass by a spot where Waze says there's an officer, but he's no longer there, you have the ability to go into the app and mark that he's no longer there. And then if enough people are also reporting that yes, the officer is indeed gone, Waze will clear that alert to try to minimize any sort of false alerts. Now, something that's really nice is Waze also integrates with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so it can uh, integrate with the interface on your dash. I use this all the time with CarPlay and I love the nice clean setup and the big display I have here, even if my phone is in my pocket or my phone is doing something else altogether. I also find that while driving, it's easier to uh, use some of the buttons integrated here in my car as opposed to kind of tapping on the phone screen. Additionally, Waze also offers voice control. So if you want to just report officers by speaking and do it completely hands-free, you also have that ability. Okay, Google, report police. Got it, I reported police. So from a safety aspect, I really like that. Now the interface of Waze, I find to be kind of cartoonish and gamey. I'm not a huge fan of that, but that's how the design looks. Regardless of the interface though, Waze I find to be the best just because of the sheer number of users that are actively using it. Now that said, if you're an Android user, I would definitely recommend taking a look at JBV1 and Highway Radar. These are third-party apps that also have the ability to pull in and share crowdsourced information, but they're gonna give you much better alert presentation than even Waze. For example, if you want longer distance alerts, you can just go into the app and customize your alert distance, say one mile, three miles, five miles, you can choose what you want. Additionally, those apps can also take a look at historical information over time and generate color-coded heat maps to show where officers commonly like to set up speed traps. This can be really helpful in case maybe an officer is in one of those spots, but he hasn't been reported yet. You'll have an idea that, hey, this is a common speed trap area. At the same time, though, I do find that using that option, I get more false alerts, so to speak, just because, well, cops aren't always in that spot. This is just a spot where they're commonly located. Now, one of my favorite things is those apps also have the ability to report when police are running a speed enforcement from the air via a plane or a helicopter. The apps are able to track all the air enforcement going on in real time and alert you down on the ground in your car. That combined with the fact that you're also gonna be getting longer distance alerts could let you know that, hey, there's a whole pack of chase cars up ahead uh, that that officer up in the air is gonna be radioing down to. So very cool package here, uh, available here on Android. And I personally prefer this setup over something like running a police scanner or maybe an ADSB receiver. JBV1 and Highway Radar also work great when backgrounded thanks to their alert overlays that can pop up on top of whatever app is displaying in the foreground. Additionally, to better help grab your attention, they can also quickly flash the screen when a new alert pops up. Then on top of all that, both of these apps also offer uh, third-party plugins like Sabre uh, that help build in additional functionality. Now, in terms of the differences between these two apps, fundamentally, they kind of have different ideas. JBV1 is designed to be a V1 app, first and foremost, that also adds in some of this uh, crowdsource capability. This is gonna be great if you're running a V1 Gen 1 or a Gen 2. Now, if you're not running a Valentine 1, I would normally kind of steer towards Highway Radar. Highway Radar is focused first and foremost on all of the crowdsourced information and then has recently added support for the V1 Gen 2, kind of getting ready for the Redenso Thea. 
So if you're not running a V1 Gen 2 or even a radar detector at all, I would probably lean towards highway radar just because it's simpler and easier to use uh, and you wind up getting even better alerting than what you'll get with Waze. Now, I wish there was an iOS version of these apps, especially because I'm an iPhone person, uh, but these apps are Android only. That said, there is an iOS version of Highway Radar that's now in development. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the video description to where you can learn more. Next, let's move on and talk about Escort Live. This is an app that's definitely focused on being a countermeasure app. What I like about Escort Live is it can be even more automated. So if your Escort Radar Detector detects a KA band alert or you get shot with laser, that alert can automatically get pushed out to the cloud. You don't have to press any buttons. You don't have to do any voice commands. It just takes care of everything for you automatically, completely hands-free, which again, I really, really like while you're driving. Then if your detector picks up a K-band alert, for example, K-band, you're a lot more likely to get a false alert. You have the ability to report if it's actually a police officer or if it's maybe a false alert and say you wanna lock it out and not get alerted uh, to this false alert again, especially if it's a stationary alert not so much a moving false. Now, in terms of alert distances to different alerts up ahead, uh, I've seen those vary. I've seen alerts that uh, are gonna be over a mile on the highway. Uh, and then in the city, I've seen alerts that are less than half a mile. Now, in previous versions of Escort Live, I believe there was an option to actually go in and customize the alert distance, but I don't see that available anymore in the current version of the app. Now, compared to Waze, I find two advantages. Number one, you've got the automatic reporting capabilities like I mentioned before. The detector just takes care of the reporting for you so you don't have to mess with it while you're driving. Now, the second advantage is the fact that on your radar detector, you essentially have a dedicated display for all of your cloud alerts and you have a dedicated speaker to hear those alerts. That's really nice compared to maybe running it on an app because what happens if you have maybe your phone or your stereo turned down or you're on a phone call or you have the app backgrounded and maybe you don't have the background notifications set up, you know? Uh, when you have it on your radar detector and it's just dedicated, you're always going to be getting those alerts, no matter what's going on with your phone, you're on a phone call or whatever else. Unfortunately, though, I find that there's still not enough users to make it really useful. Now, Escort Live came out in 2011, uh, and I've been running it ever since it came out almost 10 years ago. And uh, even still, I haven't found it to compete with Waze in terms of just sheer volume and really getting useful alerts as needed. In short, I just haven't really gotten a lot of saves from it. I mean, yeah, I've gotten some alerts, but really not many saves. So I do still run it as an extra layer of protection, and I like kind of reporting my alerts to the cloud to benefit others too, but I simply haven't found it to be as useful as Waze. Now, Escort, of course, to their credit, they've definitely been working hard on this. With all of their modern detectors that they've been releasing, they've added a Escort Live integration just to try and get more and more people using the app. Additionally, after Escort's parent company bought Cobra, uh, they started kind of merging a lot of the uh, Escort Live and Cobra iRadar stuff iRadar is basically kind of Cobra's version of Escort Live. Now, if you're driving around with a Cobra detector connected to iRadar, you're going to get the very same uh, Escort Live alerts displayed on your Cobra detector. And Cobra users can now also report alerts to Escort Live. Additionally, Cobra is also building iRadar integration in some of their dash cams, uh, as well as their CB radios too. And so again, they're just working on getting more and more people uh, connected to their cloud and reporting alerts to everybody. And that's important because this is a really difficult thing to get a critical mass of users to make this feature really helpful. So I definitely appreciate that they're working hard on that. But nevertheless, even still at this point, I just don't find it to be nearly as useful as something like Waze. And to be honest, that's the reason why I just don't bring it up very much when we're talking about uh, kind of a countermeasure tool. I mean, there's a lot of other benefits to it too, but it comes to police spotted alerts or uh, shared real-time alerts. I haven't found it to be that useful, but of course it can be. It's just kind of a rare thing in general. Now, besides that, I've also found things like uh, it doesn't take into account what road you're on. So let's say you're driving down the highway and somebody uh, maybe on a surface street nearby, they detected radar, you're still going to be getting that alert, even though it's not a threat ahead of you, you know? Um, that can be useful. Maybe if you're driving down city streets and you get alerted to threats in the area, I can see that being useful, but it also means you're gonna be getting a lot of alerts that you don't necessarily need. Additionally, Escort is gonna report any sort of uh, moving alerts to the cloud. So if you're detecting an officer who's uh, driving and moving, that's gonna go out to the cloud and it's just ultimately gonna wind up being a unnecessary false alert for everybody else. And so just don't expect to get a lot of really useful alerts. Now, besides the alert sharing stuff, I do find uh, three other advantages with Escort Live that I really do like. Number one, it makes it a lot easier to go and uh, customize your detector and change settings on your detector. It's a lot easier to do it through an app than it is to manually go into the detector's menu and change settings that way. Second, when your detector is connected to the cloud via Escort Live, uh, it's going to be able to display the current speed limit of the road that you're on right on the face of the detector. 
This is only going to work for some major roads, not so much some smaller streets, and it also doesn't take into account things like uh, school zones and construction zones, but I find it to be pretty useful overall. Escort has been improving this over the years. Now, I know a lot of cars have this information built in already, plus if you're running an app like Google Maps or Waze, that also displays the information, but again, I really like just having a dedicated display where that information is always available, uh, and it works in any car, even if your phone is backgrounded or you switch over your display to look at your podcast or music or something, you're still going to be able to see the speed limit on the face of the detector. So I do like that feature. And then finally, if you have a detector that connects to Escort Live over Wi-Fi, uh, the detector is going to be able to go out and check for updates and just automatically keep itself updated. And so if there's a new firmware update that comes out for the detector, or there's an update for the built-in uh, red light camera database and speed camera database, the detector will let you know. You can just hit a button and then the detector will go ahead and update itself in the car. No more needing to take the detector home to plug it into your computer or for other detectors, literally having to bring a laptop out to your car <laughs> to plug it in and update that way. It just makes the whole process so much easier. Uh, this is not available if your uh, detector connects to Escort Live from the phone app over Bluetooth. This is only uh, something available over Wi-Fi. Then three other things that I want to mention real quick about Escort Live. Uh, first off, the cost. Now, Escort Live, it is a paid service. It costs uh, $5 a month or $50 a year. However, you get it for a year for free if you uh, buy an Escort radar detector. Additionally, because Escort doesn't want to lose like the majority of their user base, uh, they've every year continued to extend people's subscriptions for free automatically. So it's a paid service, but really you wind up getting it for free so long as you buy an Escort detector. Next, Escort Live does have turn-by-turn -turn navigation built in, but it's not really useful. Uh, in Live, the way that it works is you don't have the ability to search for a destination or an address. You literally have to go scroll in the map, find a location and point to it on the map, and then say, yeah, take me to this location. It's really weird. I think it's kind of dumb, to be honest, that you don't have the ability to search, and you have to do it this way. So for that reason, I never wind up using it, even though, yes, it technically does have turn-by-turn -turn navigation. And then finally, I've also found that the app, especially connected over Bluetooth, it's not very reliable. I've had many times to where I get back in the car and the app just doesn't automatically reconnect back to the detector and I have to go in and restart the app. Then on top of that, even while driving, I find times where it just kind of drops the signal momentarily and it reconnects, uh, or sometimes the alert even gets frozen on screen. Uh, this has been an issue with Escort Live for a while and they have kind of released a fix for it, but nevertheless, there are some kind of connectivity and reliability issues. I do find that Wi-Fi works better overall, plus you don't have to worry about kind of reconnecting the app or anything. It just works much smoother. And so in general, I like Escort Live running over Wi-Fi much more than I do connected over Bluetooth. And so at the end of the day, with all that said, uh, talking about the uh, police spotted alerts primarily, I mean... I think it's a good idea, but it just doesn't have enough users still uh, to be anything close to something like you'll get with Waze. But nevertheless, I do still run it. Just it's, it's an extra layer of protection. So cool. Next, let's talk about Google Maps. Now, I love Google Maps. I use it all the time. I love their navigation and I love the interface. I think it's nice and clean and professional. Now, in 2019, Google has added the ability to report speed traps, to report police on the side of the road. Now, interestingly, this feature doesn't work if you're just running Google Maps normally. But if you're actually navigating to a location actively, uh, you'll see a bubble on screen pop up and you can tap on that. And then you'll see an option pop up that lets you go in and report a speed trap on the road. Now that said, I think I've gotten some alerts driving around with it, but really not many at all. And that started to make more sense once I started doing some testing. See, with Google Maps reports, I saw some strange and inconsistent results. Uh, the alerts are directional, so if you post an alert in one direction, drivers will only get alerted if they're also driving in the same direction. If you're driving in the other direction, no alert will be displayed. Now, what's weird, though, is even when your alerts do show up, they don't always show up reliably. Uh, for example, sometimes you'll get a normal alert where it pops up on screen as you approach, but other drivers may not necessarily also get that alert. Additionally, even when you're approaching a known speed trap, Google Maps may show the alert on screen, but it won't actually pop up and alert you while you're driving and paying attention to the road. I've repeated the testing many times over the past two weeks on different roads with different phones and different Google accounts, and I keep seeing strange and inconsistent results like this. Then in terms of the alert distance itself, uh, when you do get an alert, Google Maps is going to alert you about a quarter of a mile before the threat, so you only get about half of the advanced warning that you do uh, running something like Waze. Now, while I have heard some positive reports so far about people having good experiences running Google Maps, uh, reading a bunch of people's experiences online, I've also been finding people are finding overall that they're just not getting a lot of alerts either. And 
yeah, that just seems to be the case here uh, with Google Maps. Now, I was hoping that uh, since Google now owns Waze, that Waze would be sharing information with Google Maps to help uh, get more alerts into Google. However, Waze's CEO has confirmed that they do not share information with Google Maps in this way. And so that explains why you're really not going to be seeing that many alerts here in Google Maps. Regardless, given how widespread and popular Google Maps is, I was honestly expecting to see more alerts posted here in the app. Now, maybe we're not seeing a ton because it's still a newer feature. Maybe people aren't used to using it yet. Maybe it's because of the way they've been staggering the rollout. I honestly don't really know. And even trying it with a bunch of different phones, trying to get the alerts, I just haven't really had good luck with it. But yes, it does support the capability. And I know a number of you have reported that it does work. And I think I've seen some as well, just really not that many. And so for myself, I typically just run uh, Google Maps for navigation and then Waze running in the background to give me the police spotted alerts. Um, and for all this kind of stuff, of course, your mileage may vary. And actually, I'm curious, you know, for those of you who've been running Google Maps, have you been seeing alerts? Have you been seeing some or a lot or none at all? I'm kind of curious what your experience has been. And then finally, let's talk about Apple Maps. Now, Apple Maps was really problematic when it first launched, but it's actually gotten a lot better since. And that way, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Redline 360C, actually. Now, Apple Maps, it's got a couple advantages over the other apps that I found um, that I really like. For example, I find that the Apple CarPlay integration is better and more seamless when you're running Apple Maps. Uh, additionally, on the phone itself, you're going to be able to see the uh, navigation information even on the lock screen, uh, not just notifications or whatnot. And then finally, I also really like the Apple Watch integration. I'm typically running my navigation stuff uh, muted and only getting the alerts for police spotted and whatnot. Um, and so I'm relying on things to be alerted visually. Now with uh, the Apple Watch, you can actually have it uh, give you with haptic feedback uh, kind of vibrations as you're approaching a turn ahead. And that's definitely helped me more than once to avoid actually missing out on a turn ahead. So I really like that feature as well. Now, moving on to the police spotted alerts, though, uh, this feature is going to be coming in iOS 14.5. Uh, it's available currently in the beta version of 14.5. And so for that reason, I grabbed an old iPhone <laughs> and just loaded up 14.5 beta on here just to try the feature out. Now, the way that it works is it's a lot like Google Maps to where you don't have the ability to report alerts if you just have the app open. But as long as you're actually navigating to a location, you can pull up from the bottom of the screen. Uh, you'll see a button that says report that you can tap on and then you'll see a blue button that says speed check tap on that and you'll be reporting that alert to the cloud now i wasn't able to then see my own alerts in the map and i also wasn't able to uh, get the notification of when i drive by this area again i tried driving by a couple times in uh, both directions i've done it over different days and different locations but no matter what i do i can't seem to get apple maps to show me any of my reported alerts i kind of doubt that there's people behind me all the time running iOS beta 14.5 and Apple Maps and marking that <laughs> the officer is no longer here or something. Maybe it's just an issue with beta. Maybe that's the way it's actually designed. I don't know, but I've been messing with it here. Um, hopefully when it comes out, we'll learn more about it to learn things like alert distance and alert presentation and whatnot. But in terms of reporting, that's how it works. When you're navigating to a location, uh, you kind of pull up and you've got the ability to report different things such as a speed check, which police spotted. Now, even when it's up and running, though, I'm guessing it's going to be not as popular as Google Maps. Um, this is obviously an iOS app only as opposed to Google Maps, which is Android and iOS. Plus, given just kind of the limited usage I've experienced, and I know a lot of you have reported as well, even with Google Maps, I would expect to see even lower usage with Apple Maps. So I'm really glad to see that uh, this feature is coming here for Apple Maps, but I'm not holding my breath that it's going to be amazing. Regardless, I'm really glad to see that this feature is available, and I hope more and more people use it here in Apple Maps and Google Maps and everywhere else. Now for links to all these different apps that I've talked about here, uh, head on down to the video description. I'll post links to where you can download the apps as well as to where you can learn more about using any of these apps. And then finally, this is just mostly my own experience. I'm also really curious to hear from you, especially because a lot of you guys have also been running a lot of these apps as well. So I'm curious to hear which apps do you run and which ones do you find to be most effective? So definitely let me know down in the comment area. I'm curious to hear what your experiences have been. So. Yeah, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, please keep testing and trying out all these different apps too and definitely use them. The more people use them, the better it is for all of us. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing well and I'll see you in the next video.